how many rows and columns can a panda's data frame load? <laughs> Uh, 58. Oh, no, 42. <laughs> 42. Um, uh, yes. 42. Um, interesting question. Um, I, I Maybe I can answer that in a different way that uh, might be a little bit more roundabout. But I, I like to term pandas as a small data tool. And what I mean by small data is data that will fit on a single machine. People, some people call that different things, but I just call that small data versus, from my, from my point of view, big data is multiple machines. So what small data means to you is somewhat context dependent, right? I mean, 10 years ago, small data was like 8 gigs or six, you know, 16 gigs or something. But now nowadays you can get, I mean, my laptop has 64 gigs in it, but you can go out to the cloud and you can rent a computer that has many multiples of that in it as well, right? So. Um, that's sort of your first constraint. Um, but some other things that you need to take into account, again, is that pandas is small data, so it has to keep things in memory. But due to the nature of how pandas works, in that generally we're doing these chain operations that return uh, data frames along the way, you're going to have to have some overhead for copying your objects. And I, and, and I, some people are probably going to say, well, Matt, if you just use this in-place uh, parameter on, on your methods, you'll get around that. Um, so anyone who's saying that, um, if you open up the source code for uh, most of these operations that have in place, they actually make a copy under the covers and then shim it in. So you're not, in place really doesn't do what you want. And there's actually a bug uh, with the intent to remove it completely from pandas just because most people see that and it, it does not reflect what's really going on with pandas. Um, so so you, you need to have, I, I like to say three to 10x the amount of memory as the size of your data set. Um, so gotcha. that might be somewhat problematic, but again, remember one of my other hints was use the correct types. So another thing that you can do that I've seen is oftentimes, especially if you have a lot of string data, especially if it's low cardinality categorical data, mm -hmm. uh, by changing those strings to categories, you can save a huge amount of memory that way. Also, uh, for numeric data, if, if you have integers, and um, by default, Pandas is going to use an 8-byte integer to represent that. If, if you have smaller integers, you can use smaller uh, sizes to do that, and you can do the same thing with floats as well. So I, I have seen cases where you load your data set as a raw CSV, and by doing a few of these changes, you get it to like 5% of that size without any loss of fidelity of the data. And not even considering like maybe you need to filter out some of the columns or rows. So those are some things that you can do. But but do remember that that pandas, the the library itself is a small data library. Now, in sort of side note uh, briefly on that, uh, what we're also seeing these days is there's not only pandas the library, but there's now pandas the API, and the Python and data science community is basically standardized on if you're using Python, uh, then uh, we want to provide an, a pandas-like API. And so you see that in uh, a tool called Dask, you see that in a tool called Modin, you see that in a tool called Spark. Um, Spark with, I think, 3.2 just recently merged uh, a commit which was called the pandas API. The idea being that Pandas, for better or for worse, is the de facto API for data manipulation. And so, uh, you know, a lot of banks, uh, bio companies, um, insurance companies who are using Pandas and now they need to start scaling out uh, want to leverage that Pandas code. And so these other platforms are offering them a path to do that.